Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Bank of the West is offering the 1% for the Planet checking account. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. There's no monthly service charge with any deposit per statement, and there's no minimum balance required. The 1% for the Planet checking account, only from Bank of the West. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. The Kettle of Red and Friends. From first love to happy ever after. What's that? From dating to dick pics. Oh my. Oh no. The Kettle of Red and Friends. <laughs> Oh, I love a good dick. This podcast contains sexual references, coarse language and adult themes from the beginning and throughout. It is not recommended for listeners under the age of 15. If you subscribe on patreon.com slash the Catchlorette pod, you get early access to episodes, not to mention keeping the pod alive for as little as a US dollar a month. Subscribe now. Patreon.com slash the Catchlorette pod. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Catchlorette and Friends. I'm your host, Carla Anita Mattiazzo. And today's guest is a life and relationship coach. Welcome to the podcast, Megan Lascombe. <laughs> okay, I don't think anybody's going to top that introduction ever. <laughs> I'm just going to make it a prerequisite. Everybody needs to sing my name from now on. <laughs> Hello and thank you for having me. That was brilliant. Thanks for coming on. That it's a brilliant. pleasure thank to you. have you. So tell us, uh, the listeners and myself, a little bit about your journey in regards to life and relationship coaches because I'm really interested to hear, one, <laughs> about how you got into it. And Mm -hmm. uh, two, I guess the most valuable thing that you find in your career that you love the most. Right. Awesome question. Well, I'm from a massive family, one of 13, grew up around uh, so many different personalities. I've Mm -hmm. always been obsessed with the dynamics of interpersonal relationships, being the youngest. And I found myself uh, always being the person in my family that people would come to as I was growing up. I was always the friend that you went to for advice. Um, I was always the person who asked really good questions. I always got told off being too inquisitive. Um, I asked, I was too direct. I can't ask that. These were things that I heard throughout my childhood. And I sort of, I wanted explanations as to why you couldn't be inquisitive and to why you couldn't ask questions and why you couldn't get to know more. And that led me into the path of understanding the human brain and how we sort of present ourselves to society and why there are so many rules and there are so many behaviors that we have to modify in front of other people. Because I would often find my family would be one way and then we'd go see other people and they'd be another way. Or I'd be in trouble for doing something and then my mum would see me with her friend and I would be like this perfect child again. And I'd be like, what the hell is going on? This doesn't make sense to me. So I went through, uh, obviously, prior high school, high school, I studied advanced psychology. So I was doing, um, you know, the higher units when I was in year 10. Then I went into university to do sociology and psychology. And I deferred from the uh, sociology part as it was really... Um, sort of social work based and I never really wanted to go Mm -hmm. down the um, social work area and I continued with psychology and got to a point where I was doing statistics and research methods and I don't know if any of your listeners have done psychology but they will agree with me and I know they're nodding now going stats and research methods sucks the hardest (laughs) it's the worst and I decided in that um, lecture that I couldn't be a psychologist because I hated numbers Mm -hmm. and I wasn't there to understand the stats behind 
people. I wanted to understand yes. people and I wanted yes. to work with people. So I went and did my coaching certificate and studied that for over a year and a half mm -hmm. did so many other courses that I could have called myself a study junkie, but you know what? I don't <laughs> think any education is wasted. Uh, so this is from the process of 18 to 26, all of this study. Mm -hmm. And when I was 26, I went, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do life and relationship coaching. And here I am 34 years old and loving it. Crazy, like crazy. I Brilliant. love it. I love it. Yeah. Like, and I love it more now than I did when I first started and I've always continued to love it. So I feel very grateful that I'm in a job that I froth. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love the way that you describe that and snap. We're by 34. Nice. It's uh, look, 34 is an, an interesting age. I reckon um, mm. it's an interesting age. For many reasons, I think. <laughs> oh, I love this. There's a tangent here. <laughs> For many reasons. I don't know if it's just the life experience that I've had uniquely, but I feel like it's in between still. And this is something that I've always, always been on about my whole fucking life, Megan, is <laughs> constantly proving myself to one myself and to other people that one, I'm not stupid and two, my age mm -hmm. does not equate to the life experience that I've had. And I've had a lot of trauma as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's mm -hmm. really shaped, as you'd know, trauma really shapes um, Absolutely. people uh, who they eventually who they are and, and whatnot. So I feel mm -hmm. like 34 is still at the age where women in particular mm -hmm. make you feel like you're still not old enough to know anything. So I mm. struggled in my teens and my 20s to prove my intelligence and life experience with other women. I still feel mm -hmm. like there is, and I think this is about the patriarchy, um, yep. that women are supposed to be against each other, not supposed to be yes. supporting and uplifting each mm -hmm. other. And it's mm. even in the subtleties of the passive aggressive responses to whatever someone's taught another female's talking about mm -hmm. in particular Absolutely. if it's a, a woman older than me for example mm -hmm. and I'll be giving my life experience on a certain scenario and just the the patronizing passive yeah. aggressive responses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've always found, and I know I'm not articulating this effectively, Megan. So I'm no, I get exactly what you're saying. A little bit. <laughs> no, I definitely get what you're saying. What but I'm I've hearing you say is that. having to prove. Yeah, yeah, having to feeling feeling like you need to justify your thoughts, feelings based on your age in comparison to those who are older. Mm. So yes. I can completely appreciate what you're saying. So I do this as a job. I have to decipher people's thoughts all the time. So <laughs> you can talk around in circles and don't worry. I can hear the underlying, the underlying message that you're trying to convey. And what you're saying is absolutely right. Patriarchy has taught us that women are actually not friends. We're foes. We're actually mortal enemies. Be better. Be smarter. Be prettier. Be wiser. Be sexier. But be thinner. But have a big butt. But be this. Like it's all a crock of shit. And women don't actually support women until they feel persecuted by another woman. That's yeah. the problem. Yep. And I, I feel that until that dynamic shifts where women can actually look at women and see friends as opposed to seeing threats, like it's not going to change. It's not going to change. And I, I think there's still a long way to go. And if women can stop putting up um, bullshit memes telling how much they support their girlfriends and then behind their backs bitching about it, that'd be great. Thanks very much. Okay, yes. Bye. Yes. I'll give you a I'm couple so of scenarios there that support exactly what you said. So when I was about 28, 29, um, my longest relationship uh, broke up. 
And then mm. subsequently from that, I did, and because I'm quite a deep thinker, I analyze a lot and I, yeah, I'm not good with surface level shit. I'm not good with that. Mm, um, cause it's just, it's, for me, it's a waste of fucking time, but what else? <laughs> <laughs> so I did a, um, a, cause the dude left me, right? So I did a big, um, analysis on myself. And then I looked at the relationships in my life mm-hmm. and I was a part of a group that I was kind of friends with in high school. And then we became close outside of high school. And this was the type of group that if you were the person not there and there was four of us, if you were the person that couldn't make the lunch or the dinner or the coffee, mm-hmm. you were the one that would, were being bitched about. Yeah. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And I just went, yeah, yeah. I actually don't want that anymore. So I haven't been mm-hmm. friends with them for a very long time. And I, it was very interesting. Only really one of them tried to stay in my life and I was just like, yeah, nah, sorry, not about it. Not sorry. Uh, We're at capacity. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's interesting that uh, you say that because that's so, so true. And I think that's why maybe I have more male friends, Megan, than um, female friends because I feel mm. like male fr- friendships with males Mm-hmm. are easier to navigate and I feel mm. more comfortable that my male friends are not going to bitch about me behind my back because generally, mm. generally dudes have no interest in bitching generally. Second example mm-hmm. I'll give you. Recently I was out to lunch with some people and we were talking, uh, they were talking about uh, another friend of theirs and how I should meet her because we'd get along really well. Now, one person in the group said, oh, no, they shouldn't meet. They're two alpha females. They'll be in competition with each other. Um, yeah, that's not what I'm about. I'm not about that. I'm about uplifting other women. I'm not, a, I'm not about that competition. Really can't wait to meet her. Mm-hmm. Great, great response. Because I just, I think I'm. Um, fucking has time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, Megan. Who has fucking time to be like their competition? Like, really, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and don't, and like, no, there's no competition, mate. Nah. There's plenty nah. of world and plenty of everything for, to go around. No competition. I find the only competition I seek to have is with myself, with my performance stuff. I'm only competing Absolutely. with the last season that I've done mm. or whatever. That's my, that's what I'm interested in competition wise. Competition with people can eat a dick. I'm not interested. 100%. It's not, it doesn't need to exist and it's stupid. <laughs> like it, it's pointless to compete with other people because you're not them. Like why waste your energy competing with somebody? Like it just, it serves no positive purpose. Like, but also what women have been fed is this. And it was interesting that you said that you would go, oh, you know, I, I find it easy to hang around with men. Right. Because what that is, is internalized misogyny. Yes. Because you've been told that men are cooler to hang around with. They're less bitchy, la la, which is also a crock of shit. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, Women have been told that, oh, hang out with men. Guess who told women that? Men. Patriarchy yeah. said that. Patriarchy <laughs> said that men are easier to get along with. And women went, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, they, they drank the fucking Kool-Aid. Women drank the Kool-Aid. No, women are fantastic. We are fucking incredible. And women need to, instead of having a what sex is more laid back, it's who is more laid back. Like, is that girl for me? Is that girl good for my vibe, my energy? Like, you know, I think, I think we raise women to believe that women are bitchy and manipulative and men are laid back. But God, don't be friends with too many men though, because well, we don't want anybody thinking anything like, you know, yeah. like, so it's like, it's this fucking, 
whole bullshit run around of be friends with men because they're chilled, but don't be too friendly with them because then they might get the wrong idea and people might think you're dating him. So yes. don't like, it's fuck man. It's just, it's, it's a head so many fuck. fucking rules. It's a head fuck. It is a head fuck. On another episode of the podcast, I spoke about just that point. I mm-hmm. had to explain interactions to ex colleagues of mine. Cause I bumped into one of my close friends I hadn't seen in a few years from uni and we're very Mm. tactile, touchy feely. Mm -hmm. And that's just our Mm -hmm. friendship. And because obviously I was different at work than I Mm -hmm. was in my personal life. In your personal life. Yeah. I had two people going, hang on, that's a dude. Why are you guys touching each other? I'm like, (laughs) okay. Why do you care? (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> why, do, why do you give a shit? Like, that's literally like, oh my, my best mates, men, best friend, dude. Known him since I was 22. Mm-hmm. He was, I'm tactile AF. Like, and if people have something to say, I'm like, what's your fucking concern, mate? How about you fucking look at your own? Stay in your own lane, bro. Like, <laughs> like at the end of the day, like, if this is making you feel uncomfortable, check yourself. Yeah. Like, yep. if this makes you feel uncomfortable, guess what? Don't do it. <laughs> like, it's such a weird thing and I think that's what 34 is 34 is when you look at society and you go you know what if you've got your judgments keep that shit to yourself because I'm gonna do me yes thank you and good night (laughs) thank you and good night yes yes and it's so interesting you say that as the more I consciously take that standpoint of if someone's coming at me with something that they don't understand in regards to what I'm doing or having a drastically um, big emotional response to something that I'm doing or something that I've said that is actually not even directed at them or actually probably doesn't even have anything fucking to do with them, then that's about... (laughs) them yeah it's all yeah. about me yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely and I call that the separation of tasks when you realize that what what is going on is separate from you it's their task not yours right you just let it go let it go let them deal with their own shit don't fight everybody's fire sometimes they just got to sit in their own discomfort and get over their bullshit themselves <laughs> And that would be, yeah, I love that. I love that. And that would be the same in reverse. I've noticed when I'm finding something really irritating Mm -hmm. within me, when someone's doing something that's Mm -hmm. actually not necessarily directly affecting me, but just their action or their vibe or Mm -hmm. the way that they're saying or whatever it is, is setting something off or triggering something. That's my thing. I've got Absolutely. to that shit. And God, those feelings suck, don't they? Oh, yeah, that's they the do. worst. Oh, I hate when somebody holds a mirror to me and I'm like, hey, you. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. And you're just going to sit, you're going to sit in your own discomfort. But I suppose the best thing about that is when you can actually look at somebody else and go, that's a them thing because I know I have my own things that I'm working on that have nothing to do with them. So I suppose the flip side of that is just emotional awareness, which, God, we all need to have that. We really need to have it. Yeah. Like, pretty please. <laughs> yeah. So usually on this podcast we go from first crushes to happy ever after and everything in between. Oh, and because you are a relationship coach, mm. can we start with either your crushes or advice around crushes? Because I know even as an adult, people have crushes and stuff and and well, I uh, my crushes vary. <laughs> my crushes vary from uh, gender. So I have had male, female crushes and I married a man and now I married a woman. So let me tell you, I dabbled. I definitely gave my crushes a good hard go. (laughs) (laughs) I did not hold back when it came to the crushes category. I crushed the crush category, I think. Uh, I would definitely say crushes are fantastic. People do not talk about crushes as much as they should. 
crushes do not get the uh, highlights that they should, I believe, mm -hmm. because I think people look at crushes as love. And there's a huge distinction between the two. And yeah. I think uh, my first my first crush ever was my next door neighbor, Adrian. I loved him. He had the most beautiful blue eyes and the most beautiful blonde hair and I loved him. But then he poured petrol on me and that was a bit inconvenient. So we left him, we left him. Um, <laughs> I know, right? I know, he poured petrol on me and um, tried to set me alight. True story, that actually happened. And oh, um, Lord. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine that fucking happening today? Like back in the fucking, you know, late eighties when I was just, you know, running around the backyard. <laughs> like, <what>? Fucking <laughs> hell. Uh, what a maniac. But I have had yeah. a guy who I was in a relationship with try and set my hair alight with a lighter. Right. Okay. Was his name Adrian? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> You may have dated the same person. You may have dated my fucking crush. <laughs> he might have changed his name. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> if that's how he started, if that was his introduction to life, I'm not going to put it past him. Oh, shit. But that was my first crush. That was mm -hmm. my first crush. And then from there in primary school, um, when I didn't realize that I had crushes on women. I, I, there was a girl in my class in, when I was in grade five and I remember looking at her and this is such a weird thing, but I remember feeling like I wanted to consume her. Oh. Right. And I freaked the fuck out. I was like, what the fuck am I feeling right now? This is so weird. Like, Oh, what's going on? And I remember just looking at her smiling and I wanted to devour her face. Like, you know how you get that feeling when you see a baby? You're like, oh, I want to fucking eat you. I just want to eat yeah, you. Yes. yes. <laughs> Literally me, grade five, looking at this chick in my class. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's really strange. Awesome. No worries. Let that go. Then went into high school, crushes on, uh, on a boy. And then I ended up dating a guy for about three, four years. And he was like, I lost my virginity to him. He was lovely. And he still remains probably one of my most favorite people. If I ran into him, I'd be like, hey, let's grab a coffee. Super lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, I never dated, I never dated women. I just did the, you know, the cool thing where you just like see them. Like, you know, like you got to keep it cool. Like, you know, tests and orders, check them options out. <laughs> and then when I was 18, I met um, a guy after leaving a really abusive relationship. So he sort of like saved me. Like he saved me because I was in a very abusive physically and emotionally abusive relationship. And I went into this relationship and he like saved me. And then all of a sudden it was like eight and a half years and I was getting married. Whoa. And I was like, oh my God, I'm getting married. Oh my God. And I remember walking down the aisle being like, Oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, oh no. Yeah. And all my older siblings had got married young and they'd all got married like when they were 18 to 22. And I wow. was 22. I was late to the boat. And I was like, oh, I'm going to let my family down. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Meanwhile, nobody actually in my family said you need to get married, but I just took it as fact. <laughs> right? Yes. Yep. I was just like, oh, I need to do what the family does, right? So I got married. And then about two years later, I was like, oh, no, this isn't for me. Got to go. Bye. Um, and ended that relationship and got divorced. And it was, I, I had a really great divorce. He's a freaking legend. He's so lovely. And it was a really, and I feel, I feel very grateful to be able to say I had a very good divorce because mm -hmm. working in my field, I know that there is definitely ugly sides of divorce. Got divorced, then ended up through work, meeting my now wife, bing to boom. That's it. That's my like, that's my sexy raunchy story of really? that I crushed and then married. <laughs> but the moral of the story is don't ever date somebody who puts petrol on you, y'all, okay? That's the moral yeah, yeah, yeah. of the story. <laughs> I was actually going to be like, well, glad you didn't end up with Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> glad I didn't end up with Adrian too. God, far out. What are the biggest lessons that you learnt from your first marriage and your current marriage? Are they different or are they the same? Oh, they are 100% different. Oh, they are so different. My first, my first marriage taught me how important it is to not suppress your dreams and goals in order to keep someone else happy. Uh, 
in my first dream, I felt like I was the facilitator to my then partner's goals and ambitions. I was, Mm -hmm. I was like the conduit, the champion to their goals. And I made sure that they were, you know, finishing things that they wanted to do. And it taught, looking back on that relationship, I think I, I learned the importance of teamwork and true, true partnership in a sense of, I will champion your dreams and I will equally champion my own, if that makes yes. sense. In that, in that relationship, I lost myself. I didn't even know who I was. I look at myself in that relationship now and I have so much sympathy for who I was and empathy and just love for who I was only because I was lost in this fog of yeah. just who I thought I had to be, of who I thought I had to be. And then I look at myself in this relationship and oh my fucking God, it's a polar opposite. It's a polar opposite. It's almost, because in this relationship I can breathe. I breathe freely and I have a great, I have a great opportunity. My, like I travel with my work. I chase my dreams. I am, my friends are just freaking amazing. Like I, this relationship is freedom. In the other relationship I was confined. That's the wow. difference. Yeah, that's the difference. But the, the thing is massive. I was... I, I was confined in the last relationship because I allowed the confinements to be there. So I think that's a big distinction I want to make that this wasn't somebody who was telling me I had to be like that. I Mm -hmm. put the confinements on myself and believed I had to be like that. Yes. So just want to make that distinction. It wasn't, he was not controlling it all. He was lovely. So with that in mind, were those restrictions and those confinements, were they expectations you put on yourself through what you thought family expected? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that, I thought that I just had to do everything in line with how my family had done it. Like my family, like my siblings had kids. They were all having kids when they were 23, 24, you know, like it was just, yeah. You know, it was just, I felt like I had to be on this, um, I, I, I really consider myself the black sheep of the family because I, re, I went to university, you know, I really, I, I've spent a lot of time chasing my own dreams and, you know, running my own business, following my intuition. And a lot of my family progressively followed each other and they all got married and had kids and did all, and they're all really, really happy, but I never aligned with that. And mm-hmm. that relationship was me trying to align with something that wasn't me. So I felt like I was walking in their footsteps, hoping that it would fulfill me in some type of way. But it was only until I was able to come to the realization that actually I want none of that. I I don't want to be this person that I took a step back and realized that, Hey, um, following the family's footsteps is, uh, it's not what I want to do. So how old were you when you realized that that first marriage wasn't the right fit for you? Uh, probably, 23. Right. Yeah. Actually, I knew, no, no, I knew it wasn't a rap for me when I was walking down a fucking aisle. <laughs> yeah. So fuck, I was 22. I could have fucking told, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, let's just, yeah. People who like I work with, I'm always about real talk. Like you've got to be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, you've got to hold yourself accountable to your life. And That's right. I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer that my life experience isn't judgeable by anyone else because I didn't live it. And That's I'm very right. proud of my life. I'm super proud of my life. Like I love all the decisions I've made, even if people hear them and go, Ooh, fuck, because my life has been a fucking trip and I really have enjoyed it. <laughs> so, because it's taught me everything. Like I, yes. it's taught me everything I know, and it but I, I knew are, that walking, so. that's it. And I knew walking down the aisle, it was the wrong decision and everything in me was saying it was the wrong decision. And I should have listened to myself, which is why now, mm-hmm, man, Fuck this gut intuition. Let me tell you, she does not go. I do not go against it now. And I haven't oh, since good. then. That's really good. It's really hard to follow through mm-hmm. with following your gut because so many times your gut can be a little whisper, but even that mm-hmm. little whisper is enough for you to step back and go, hang on, why am I feeling a bit weird about this, that mm-hmm. something's going on here that's not quite right. Um, Absolutely. 
something that I've learned is even if I can't intellectually justify why, I still need to pull myself out. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And I, I've been really able to focus on my, my, what my brain and my gut and my intuition is trying to tell me as opposed to when I'm scared. Yes. So it's, it's being able to master, am I just scared right now or is this mm-hmm. something really not right for me? And I'm very fortunate now that I'm able to tell the difference between the two. Yeah, that's good. How long did it take for you to, to discern the difference? Like what, how long a process was that? Mm. Cause I'm sure it was a process. Oh, absolutely. After I reckon it was after I'd gotten married and realized that that decision I made was my intuition. I was able to go, Oof, okay, that's what that felt like. Okay. So when those decisions started coming up again in my life, and I was like, when I, when I had to say, okay, I'm, I'm leaving this marriage, was fear coming up or was it intuition coming up? No, nah, no, nah, it wasn't fear. I wasn't scared at all. I was fucking pumped. Yeah. Give me the fuck out of this. <laughs> but, like intuition was you're making the right choice and I made the right choice. And, you know, I think, I think when it comes to our intuition, it is always changing and evolving based on how we grow. So yes. my intuition today will be different in six months because mm-hmm. I'll have new lessons to take into consideration. And I think what people also need to realize is as you evolve, all those feelings change. So you can't rely on who you were feeling and what you were feeling six months ago. You can only rely on what you're feeling like now. That's really good. Can you repeat that please? I need to hear it again. And I want the listeners to hear it again. You can't rely on what you were feeling or who you were six months ago. You have to rely on who you are and how you're feeling right now. Awesome. That's so important. And to me, that also says that's a kind of a bit of a forgiveness of yourself for past mistakes or past wrong steerings. Yes. That releases you from the mistakes and helps you focus more on the lessons. Absolutely. Well, nothing in life is a mistake. It's a lesson. I don't look at part, I don't look back on my life and think I've made mistakes. I think I made decisions and yes. were some of the decisions probably not the uh, most <laughs> perfect ones, you know, like, should I have had that extra shot that night? Maybe not. <laughs> but did, was it was it a great story and an adventure to tell? Yeah, it fucking was. Like every decision that I've made, it led me here. And I think there is so much power in freeing yourself from that prison of I need to, you know, I need to seek forgiveness or I live in shame or I'm embarrassed for my decisions. No, nah, don't be. Why? Like what for? Set yourself free, man. Like fucking hell. The only, the only person you hold yourself accountable to in life is you. And if you can go to sleep at night going, Hey, you know what, what I did yesterday might not want to do that again. (laughs) Cool. Awesome. That's fine. Like, I think I'm very fortunate to work in the area that I do and to know that the expectations people put on themselves, it's like this prison people just walk into. Yes. And they've all got the key, you know, we've all got the keys to our own prison and we think everybody else has them for us, but they don't. And I just think life will be so much easier if you just open your own fucking prison. That also leads into the expectation of others fulfilling your happiness and others fulfilling the love that you should first have within yourself. Mm. Expectations. The yes. root of all evil. <laughs> it is expectations suck and expectations suck because we get told from a young age that somebody else is going to meet them they're going to fulfill them somebody else is going to make you so happy they're going to do this for you your friends are going to be able to do this and it's just a crock of shit again it's just a lie because if you don't know a what makes you happy mm-hmm. b how is anybody else going to fucking make you happy yep and this is the problem the problem is nobody knows what makes them happy truly I want you to ask people, what makes you happy? And they'll be like, oh, I don't fucking know. Like, seriously, people don't know enough about themselves because they give everybody else power to tell them about themselves. Yes. Tell me you like me. Tell me I'm pretty. Validate me. Tell me I'm smart. Like, no, you tell you. 
Yes. Yes. Like, there is a big gap in happiness because people say, society tell me that I'm good, then I will be happy. As opposed to, I tell me that I'm happy and fuck society. Like, Do you think that's been a shift because of social media? Yes. Oh, my God. Social media is ruining is, is ruining some people's happiness. Not everybody. Obviously, there are people who are really good on social media to, like, uh, social media, social media. Like, I don't look at anybody on social media and think, oh, my God, I want ads. I want, I couldn't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that comparison trap on, on social yes. media. And I also don't follow accounts that don't make me feel great. Like, right. I'm all yes, about I'm, mm-hmm. following really good accounts. And I preach that to all of my followers. Only follow what enriches you and makes you laugh. Like, otherwise it's not worth the time. Correct. But social media has definitely put us in a sort of hot seat of comparative thoughts. Yes. And that sucks because comparison is the thief of joy and life is way too short, like way too short, man. I think if anything 2020 has taught us is life is way too fucking short to spend it, not enjoying it. Yes. And I hope that people have been able to where they can, where they've had more time to be at home Mm -hmm. with themselves. I hope people have been able to take like a speck of that, take a speck of, Mm -hmm. okay, reassessing what do I actually want? What actually makes me happy? That's all well and good you know, for me to say in fucking theory, but in reality, it's just easy (laughs) to sit there or lie there on your fucking phone or watching Netflix, you know? Well, absolutely. Of course it is. It's sometimes it's just easier to just like numb out, shut off, do something Mm -hmm. that is mind numbing. Absolutely. And it's working out, is this sort of mind numbing activity? Mm -hmm. Is it positively serving me or is it not? I'm all for people scrolling social media. I love a good scroll, but is what you're, is the content that you're consuming helping you or is it hindering you? Yeah. You know, that's to me, to it's just, it's just asking, it's just asking questions of yourself. Like if, is what is the, is the content you're consuming good for you or bad for you? That's it. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's really good. And having those questions are very helpful. And I think, necessary for people to ask themselves so I'm glad that you are (laughs) bringing that to the forefront it's really good I hope you're enjoying this episode of The Catchalorette and Friends. Make sure you follow the podcast at The Catchalorette Pod on Instagram. And if you think your love journey is worth sharing with me on the podcast, send me an email, thecatchalorettepod at gmail.com or slide into my Instagram DMs. Oh, and don't forget to give the podcast a review and tell all your motherfucking people to listen to the show. Now let's get back to this episode. What advice, and I'm asking specifically for me, and I'm sure. You're like asking for a friend. I'm that friend. <laughs> and I'm sure other people will be in the same boat. Well, not everybody, but whatever. So I've been like my last serious relationship, long-term relationship was about five years ago. Mm -hmm. I dated a guy on and off after that five years for about a year-ish, year and a half, year-ish. I'm 34. Mm -hmm. I would like to be a mum of at least one bubba because I know where I'm at fertility-wise. Yep. I'm not interested in online dating because I've had too many negative experiences from that medium. What should I be doing or what could I be rather than should, what could I be doing differently to open myself up to the possibilities because I know that I have somewhat of a wall situation going on. around Mm. myself and I'm told I'd have a fuck off stamp across my forehead Mm. to people that don't know me 
I must have missed yeah. that. I can't see that at all on you. Oh, thank you. Did you put makeup on? Did you put makeup on to cover it? <laughs> Megan, you're funny. Very good. No. <laughs> What is my advice to you? My advice is number one, under start, uh, don't limit yourself. You've already told yourself you're not going to date on online. That's right. not serving you positively. Okay. You've already cut yourself off for an opportunity there and right. loads of opportunity because online dating is a plethora. It's like a smorgasbord of people out there. Right? So we're not saying you actually have to date somebody in the online world, but keeping yourself available to the option is always a good idea. We don't want to close down doors. Mm -hmm. We want to open the doors. And if we want to walk through it, cool, we walk through it. But if we just want to keep the door open and look and browse, yeah. it's totally fine as well. It's for you, I would suggest putting it all out to the, on the table. Ask for what you want. Ask for what you want. Put your age, age out there. Say you want a kid. This is your goals. This is your dreams. Who's going to meet me there? Done. Where do I put this? Where do I put this, Megan? Where? Look, what do the kids do in these days when it comes to dating apps? <laughs> what are the apps? What are, we, what are we on? Tell me the platforms you use. Well, I'm not anymore. I just, I like every now and then, maybe every three months, I'll go on for a day and a bit. And then I just find it super boring, really hard to oh. engage with conversation. Do you know what I hear? I hear lack of commitment. That's what I hear. But remember though. No. <laughs> but but remember yeah. though, I live in South Australia and the ratio of single women to mm. single men is fucking mm -hmm. bullshit, is what it right. is. Yeah. So I'm also hearing excuses here too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, keep it keep it coming. Keep it coming. coming. The biggest going. piece of dating advice is know what you want and put it out there everywhere you possibly can. Okay. That's it. That this is the down. only rules of dating advice. Know okay. what you wait, want. Wait, wait. Know what I want. I love that. You actually have a pen. You're doing I'm it. I'm fucking right. Know what you down. want. Good. Okay, good. I've got three for you then. Know what you want. Two, know what you don't want. Yes. Like red flags, the things yep. you definitely do not want in a relationship. And number three, put it out to every fucking channel. Jump on eHarmony, get a Tinder account. Like go and tell people, do speed dating. Like get amongst it, y'all. Like come on. Okay. Like, dating is fun. Dating is fun. Dating is supposed to be fun because it gives us an opportunity to get into an interpersonal relationship with somebody else and explore not only them but ourselves. It's, we've got to change the landscape of dating to thinking every date is where you're going to meet the person you're going to marry. You're not going to. No. You're going to go on 10 dates and you're going to meet eight shitheads. Yes. Yes. This was going to happen. Yes. yes. So let's have some fun doing that experience. <laughs> right. Let's, let's just be ourselves fully, authentically empowered and love what we want and be brave in what we want and put it out there because somebody is going to see to that it. and they're going to want it. Yeah. That's right. what they're going to want. Exactly. The problem is we don't show all our cards. We go, oh, you know, I'll be a little bit alluring and, you know, I'll do this. No, don't do that because the reason people aren't getting what they want is because they're not being clear with what they want. Be so, clear. Clear is sexy. Being clear on that note. So mm -hmm. on, say, on a profile, the fact that I would, I'm ready for love, ready to have a kid with the right person I should specifically put that in my profile because when I've had conversations mm -hmm. and I think I know what you'll say to this, but I want to ask it anyway, when mm -hmm. I've had conversations with men and they ask, mm -hmm. what do you want? And I am clear the amount yep. of men that respond with, Oh fuck. Well, you're desperate. Oh fuck. Like they make you cool. feel bad for being up. No. Right. No, with, with you what? make you feel bad. You make you yeah. feel bad. You listen to what they say to you and you go, oh, that makes me a bad person. Oh, yeah, that's too clingy. Fuck that. Fuck that. Why? Why is being direct and being honest for what you want too much or desperate? Like, do you go into McDonald's and go, hey, I want a Big Mac and cheese, and they go, oof, you're fucking desperate? <laughs> no, you go, fucking hell, serve me. I fucking know what I want. Give me the fucking food that I want to eat. Right? <laughs> It's oh true though. It's the same oh shit. God. Yeah. It's, it's the same true. shit. Why? Why when it comes to dating, do we go, actually, let's be really vague. 
let's be super duper non-specific. Let's just accept somebody who meets 20% of the requirements and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. No. What I would say, instead of saying I'm ready for love, I would say something that actually describes what love means to you. Because okay. love's quite a personal experience. So maybe for you, love is I'm looking for um, commitment, fun, transparency, and friendship. Yeah. It is an example. You know, um, it's really easy for people to use words like love or I'm looking to be, ha- I want to be happy. But the problem is they're not using descriptive words to describe right. what that is. So people, Okay. So people don't look at it and go, oh, I align with those things. Great. Do you know That's what I mean? really good. And, That's and for dating, excellent. super important to be specific. Be specific. Specific is sexy. Say it with me. Specific, specific is, is sexy. sexy. Absolutely. Yeah. Megan, I feel like from these instructions... We mm-hmm. need to do a follow-up episode. I think so too. <laughs> Just, I think so too. What happens? Yeah, because I want to be involved in this now. I need to know who this swipe, who the swipes, who's coming through. Like I'm on this dating journey with you now, okay? We're going to get earpieces. Right. I'm part of it now. Fucking of this. <laughs> I'm on board. I'm fucking on board. This is great. I love this. Okay, so say there has been um, witty banter back and forth between two mm-hmm. people. Let's use yep. me as an example again because, you mm-hmm. know, that's awesome. Gosh. Great. Absolutely. Let's use you <laughs> as the example. So you and Tim have had great banter. Yes. I don't know where Tim came from, but Tim, Tim's on the date with you. You've got great banter. So <laughs> we get to a date and I'm going mm-hmm. to replay some of a date that I have experienced and look it's great for me because I'm a cabaret artist who uses her life on stage as material Mm -hmm. so this dude gave me fucking excellent material love it so on this date I and I and this is part of the reason I stopped um online dating too is because I was sick of and I and I know this is on me, but I was sick of um, going on dates. And at some point I would have to switch my mind over to, okay, well, this is material now. This is not something that I'm yep. enjoying at all. Yep. So on this particular date with Tim, Tim. Uh, at some point in the conversation, this dude proceeded to tell me and the people that have seen the cabaret show that this story is in um, will know it. At some point in the date, this guy proceeded to tell me that it's more cost effective and time effective to get happy ending massages than to date a woman. Now that's not why say that on a fucking date. Tim, Tim, you are going so well. (laughs) Tim, 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 Tim. Like, Oh wow! What the fuck? Tim's still like, single. Tim's still single. You know that, yeah. Tim is still <laughs> single, but he's in. He's at the. He's at that fucking parlor. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> and that's not the only shit. Like, holy so shit! Was, he gave you more fucking. Yeah. Than that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the first thing was, so the first thing was he did not look like his picture. That okay, the picture that's, was a that's lot older. Yellow flag territory. Not not good enough there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so he didn't look like his picture. He was not the age he said in his profile. Mm -mm. And he did that for manipulative reasons. Two strikes. Absolutely. Third strike was the hand job situation, the um, happy ending parlor. And then, Mm -hmm. and, and the end of it for me was him explaining to me that the reason he didn't offer to pay for dinner is because he didn't want me to feel like I had to put out. But if he paid for dessert, he would like a hand job in exchange for dessert. You know what I would like? <laughs> How about that, buddy? Do you want to sort that shit out for me while you're there? You fucking moron. What if... 
Do people like this exist? I yeah, they do, actually. They do. Tim is real. Tim is real, of course. Tim is happens. fucking real. Yep. Okay, so Tim fucked up first off by being deceptive on his profile. Do not do that. Ever. Use a very recent picture. If that means last week, selfie, do it. Mm-hmm. And do not lie about your age. Ever. Be proud of how old you are, regardless if you're 30, 50. Nobody gives a shit. Be proud of your age. Mm-hmm. And number three, that comment is such a look at his face it's fucked i'm disgusted at tim because (laughs) what he is he's showing is how not only how he is viewing at the date he is also showing his view of women when it comes to sexual empowerment and sexual freedom Mm -hmm. so tim's a fuckhead we don't like tim and there's a reason tim has to pay for it because let's be fucking real nobody would want it otherwise and i feel sorry for the people who he is having to go and pay yes but also the comment at the end i'm sorry what the fuck Look, it's funny in the show because of the way it's delivered and there's a really good song that goes with that. But in oh, the I moment, like I, would I was love this really like, I was in the moment, Megan, I was, I was like, I had gotten to the point where I was like, okay, I'm now just getting material. So my mind had switched over from, oh, mm-hmm. this could potentially be something to, yeah, this is just material. But when I was in the car driving home, I was like, Really? Is that what's on offer? Like, really? Mm-hmm. Really? Right. So, anybody listening to this, men or women, who go on dates and notice a discrepancy immediately, give yourself permission to get the fuck out of there. Do not stick around. Let me tell you, if somebody, if I was sitting across from somebody and they said it was cheaper to go get a hand job and a happy ending in a parlor, I'd be like, well, fantastic. Go do that. Bye. So yeah. Exactly. And people need to empower themselves. Women in particular, because women have been brought up to feel like they need to not rock the boat. Don't be, don't do the conflict. Don't be irrational. Don't get heated. No, get however you need to get and get the fuck out of those situations. Because yes. Tim's, Tim's in that situation in the bin and women in those situations feel empowered and strong to pick up your shit from the floor and go Yeah, because nobody deserves to be on the receiving end of that. Nobody. No, no. no. And in the bin I with think, Tim. yeah, in the bin with Tim for sure. Hashtag in the bin with Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to any other really good Tim out there. We like you, but not this Tim in particular that we named today. <laughs> I can't Hashtag not all Tims. Not all Tims. <laughs> not all Tims, yes. Not all Tims. Not all Tims. Hashtag not all Tims. So really, if you were in my ear, let's let's yes. replay that thing. Mm-hmm. If you were in my ear and I had said to you, Megan, he doesn't mm-hmm. look like his picture. Yeah, I already know the- exactly what I'm going to say right now. Yeah. yeah, go, go, go. 100% question would have been, Hey, Tim, I noticed that after sitting down in front of you right now, that the picture you put online looks nothing like the one is in front of me. Is there a reason for that? And in that moment, you have an opportunity to get insight into potential insecurity, which we all have. We're all insecure. We all want to make sure that the photo online is making us look shit hot. So men are allowed to have insecurities as well. So we find out then, is he insecure? Or B, is he being manipulative? So he could turn around and go, look, I've put on a bit of weight this year. I feel really bad about myself and I was really embarrassed to put up one now. I'm sorry about that. Or he could brush it off and be a complete fucking asshole about it. Then you've got your answer. But you ultimately get to make the decision then because he changed the rules. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you sit down, I would have been in your ear saying, okay, let's sit down and let's give him an opportunity to explain. And once he's done that explanation, if he was nice, I'd be like, okay, cool girl, get a cocktail. Let's, you know, let's see how you're feeling. That's right. But if he was deceptive, I'd be like, get your shit. We're fucking leaving. Let's go have shots somewhere else. Yes. (laughs) So second question I have with that date, Megan, is Mm -hmm. I remember calling him out on the age thing. 
<laughs> I remember saying, so what's the deal with the fact that you made yourself two years older? Cause I don't do younger dudes. That's mm. not my jam. Yep. I, that's not my jam. Mm -hmm. So his response was, and maybe it was on me for saying, dude, what the fuck was the deal with the age thing? Mm -hmm. That put him on defensive. So he mm -hmm. got defensive and then flipped it and said, what's the big deal? It's just a couple of years. I'm after an older woman because they've got a different mindset. You need to chill out because it's only two years. Just calm the fuck down. Note to any guy out there, before I get you to answer this, Megan, note to any guy out there, if you tell an Italian woman to calm down when she's not even remotely heated, you are looking to get motherfucking killed. So just don't do that anymore. Okay, Megan, answer the question. Don't do that anymore, okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to get the fucking mafia on here, okay? <laughs> In that situation, mm -hmm. I can appreciate him maybe being on the defence, but the defence exists because of the deception. Yes. So maybe in that situation it's, oh, I'm not comfortable that you have been untrue about your age, but I really would like, I really would like an explanation there. But the whole I'm looking for an older woman... Like they have a different mindset. Like, okay, Tim, let's really decipher this bullshit that you're spewing, mm -hmm. right? What you're talking about is you're looking for a fucking sugar mama because you want somebody who's going to fuck you in a few different positions because you think older women have more sexual liberation, right? Because that's the bullshit that's been yeah. fed and that's fed probably. and fed and fed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure you would have respected it more if he said, I'm looking for an older woman because I'm looking to explore my sexuality. Boom. Yes. No worries, Tim. Thanks for being yes. honest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And don't ever fucking tell me to calm down, Tim, ever. <laughs> <laughs> don't fucking ever do it. Ever. 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 And I've also had a guy drop his age to get younger women. However, his justification was mm -hmm. because of the career he is in, he mm -hmm. is not able to put exactly all his details up to me right. what, what, what career would that be firefighter oh fuck off mate <laughs> oh please oh my fuck off really <laughs> yeah like what does that have to what does your age what um, what no no mm -hmm. no 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 there, I could understand somebody doing online dating and going, I have to change my name because I'm a public figure. But then again, they put their photo there anyway, so you'd sort of see it. But like there are reasons where I go, okay, maybe sometimes you have to be. But even then I go, no, like if you have to be deceptive, what you're doing is wrong. Like if you can't be fully yourself, what are you doing? Like if you're already showing up to a date on the back foot of, oh, by the way, I'm actually not this age and this isn't my real name. Like, fuck, what the fuck? How are you going to start anything real from a place of inauthenticity? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Oh, that's too much yeah. pressure. That's way too much pressure. I'd be sweating if that was me. I'd be like, oh God, I need to explain my age. Oh God, this is what I do. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Like stuff that. No way. Yeah. And I sweat enough as it is. Woof. <laughs> That'd be just a fucking mess for me. God, I don't have an anxiety attack. Sorry, I can't make it to the date. I had a panic attack on the way. <laughs> By the yeah, way, I'm three years younger. <laughs> like, this is what I mean. Like, the, and these are some of the reasons why I fucking don't want to fuck with online dating because there's yeah. been a, like a pool of, and maybe it's I need to change my dialogue. So recently I've very much been focusing on if I exist, so does he, because I had gotten into a bit of a negative spiral of, like I said before, I live in South Australia. There's a lot of conservatives yeah. here. I'm not conservative. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily fit into a neat tidy box of what women should be, whatever mm -hmm. that should fucking is. Um, mm -hmm. But because I've had 
for example, like those two experiences. And I've had some dangerous experiences as well. Mm-hmm. And I refuse to go like the amount of guys that offer up a first date as you going to their place and you've never met yeah. them before. That's not safe. Mm. And I don't understand why guys think that that is an appropriate suggestion. Well, probably because statistically they aren't the ones that are on the receiving end of domestic violence and being murdered. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to really take it into consideration. But also I think what's really important to remember is sometimes people will offer come to my house because they know their own motives. Like I can appreciate, I can appreciate that for some guys, they will be doing it under the illusion of, Hey, come to my house because then I can potentially have sex with you. But there are also going to be a handful of fantastic men who know their own motives and go, Oh, I'm having you at my house because I am trustworthy. So you know, it's really important that we don't brand all people under one category and assume that they all have bad intent because yeah. there are some fantastic men out there who trust themselves enough to know they're not going to do anything that is, you know, below the belt. So they offer things as opposed to considering that there are a lot of also manipulative people out there who have ulterior motives, which are terrible. Yes. And they suck. Yes, they do. They do suck. They do suck. I just know for myself that that's a no go for me. Like I could. It's a boundary for you. Not. I would not. Absolutely. Doing that. Yeah. Boundary for you, and it's important to have boundaries when we date. It's important to know, and this is why I was saying before: always know what you do want and what you don't want. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to go to somebody's house, that's totally acceptable. You might want to do that on the fifth or sixth date. Yes. Or maybe the tenth or fifteenth, like whatever number suitable for you. Yeah. But it's important that we we know the do's and don'ts and we communicate those to people. Yes, that's really important, really important. So how would one become a successful data? Because I don't feel like, mm. like I'm fine with the conversation stuff. I'm, like, I'm fine with that stuff. Mm-hmm. But what do you think people need in their tool bag to successfully Mm -hmm. navigate dating in this era that we live in? I think they need to have realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people need to, dating is supposed to be an adventure of exploration. It's where you're supposed to explore someone else and they're supposed to explore you. It's a get to know you. It's not supposed to be a one date. This is where I'm going to be able to tell if this is my future. Yes. It's supposed to be an introduction to a person. And I think if people looked at dating as more fun and adventure and exploration, I think it would take the pressure off having to have all the answers immediately. Yes. Let it be, people need to let dating be fun again and they need to take the, the weight of expectation off it. And I think if you know your wants, don't wants and have realistic expectations at the end of the day, there's no opportunity for things to negatively impact you because you're being yourself fully. So what's the worst that's going to happen? You're not going to align. Cool. You found one person who you don't want to date. Great. Let's move to the next one. Yes. Maybe there'll be success there. Like I think people need to understand that we all have different wants and needs in relationships. You might find someone who meets your needs, but you might not meet theirs. And that's okay. Doesn't make anybody bad. It's just an experience, an adventure. Yeah. Let's move on to the next. Yes. So I think yeah. that helps with ghosting, Megan. Yes. So yes. recently I had um, a couple of friends give my number to a couple of their friends in the last yep. probably month. Mm-hmm. And because I refuse to be attached to my phone, messaging, I've got a fuckload of shit to do, (laughs) messaging back and forth all the time. I'd actually prefer a phone call. The reluctance to actually having a phone call Mm -hmm. is kind of a, you know, well, this isn't going to go anywhere. But 
I now look at ghosting as a gift. I look at ghosting as, well, whatever it was, we didn't Mm -hmm. meet wherever we needed to meet for anything to progress. So Mm -hmm. that's fine. For example, there was one, one out of the two of the guys um, that was saying, Oh, within 20, 48 hours. I'm really keen to meet you. Can't wait to meet you. Heard so many wonderful things about you. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you. I'll call you tomorrow. I promise. Whenever Mm. a dude says, I promise, I've learned to ignore it because Mm. unless the actions follow and they rarely do, guys Mm -hmm. don't need to promise if they're going to follow through with something. That's what I've noticed. your actions will speak for you. Yes. Yes. And in the past I would have gone, Oh, I'll make excuses for him. I'll just message him or I'll just call him so that he doesn't have to feel so much pressure about being so anxious to call me. Fuck that shit. Whatever. He hasn't bothered. I'm not going to put energy there. Absolutely. Let the ghost go. Yeah. Let him fly away to somebody else. And exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Let him want someone else. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so because we're already at an hour and 15 minutes, Megan. Mm, right. Look at us. <laughs> Look at us. Check this podcast out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what parting words of wisdom mm. do you have for the listeners? Ooh. One on how to be successful in a long-term relationship and two, how to be successful as a single person, long-time single person. Okay. So my first tip when it comes to be successful in a long-term relationship is knowing that love is a verb. It's not a feeling, it's a verb. And if you aren't willing to show up and actually put in the work to do love, then you're not ready for a relationship. Yes. Uh, uh, Number two is when it comes to being successful as a single person is understanding that being in a relationship doesn't define who you are and knowing that you don't need a partnership in order to be whole as a person. Um, I think society tells people that we need to be in pairs in order to be happy. And that's a lie. Some people are fantastic solo and they should be celebrated solo. I think there's a massive misconception around partnership. Mm -hmm. And I also think if people embraced their full self authentically and realized that they wanted to be, you know, going through a life journey with themselves and doing that as an adventure, that's fantastic. Just because it's for somebody else doesn't mean it's for you. Live your own life. You know, happiness is about our own authenticity. It's not about subscribing to really outdated societal beliefs. Yes. Yes. So oh God, Megan. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Excellent. So Thank good. you. Thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, it has been, been an absolute brilliant. fucking blast. It has been a blast. Thank you so much for having me. I don't think I've ever laughed so much during a podcast and <laughs> dropped some fucking truth. That's for sure. And I didn't think I'd get off a podcast with a hashtag, not all Tim's, but, um, <laughs> but I did. And I feel like the next time I meet a Tim, I will be in this situation where I, I automatically go to thinking, are you the fucking person that was talking about handies at a parlor? That's going to be my first thought. <laughs> Not all Tim. Not all Tim's. Not all Tim's. But seriously, thank you for having me. It's been it's been amazing. Thank you for coming on Beautiful. It's been outstanding. It's been real. The Catchelorette with friends near and far, from heartache to catfish and sex toys. Ooh, ah. The Catchelorette and friends. See you next time. If you dare. Bank of the West is offering the 1% for the planet checking account. It gives back to the planet at no cost to you. And there's no monthly service charge with any deposit per statement. Only from Bank of the West. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.